Hello viewers, in this lecture I am going to solve one example to elaborate the Adomian decomposing method which I explained in the previous lecture. So here is the partial differential equation. As you can see that this is non-linear because of this term u square. Partial u by partial t minus partial 2u by partial x square plus u square minus u equal to 0 it is homogeneous. Non-linear second order partial differential equation with one initial condition u x zero is equal to alpha where alpha is any real number okay so according to adomian decomposition method i am just decomposing its its operate differential operator that call it l t is partial by partial t and then call it l x is partial 2 by partial x square and for non-linear term n of u i am taking u square minus u however u square is non-linear but u is not but we will combine all the terms which are free of any differential operators with non-linear terms so u square minus u will be our n of u okay since we need l inverse lt inverse so lt inverse would be the reverse of this operator since it is differential operator so inverse would be an integral operator from 0 to t of some function dt. You can call it dx and then apply the limit and, and convert it in t or you can put it directly in this way. Okay, according to these notations, my differential equation will take the form lt of u minus lx of u plus n of u is equal to 0 which can be written as lt of u is equal to lx of u minus n of u applying l inverse on both sides i will have since l inverse lt inverse will cancel out lt so i am left with u x t on the left hand side only and on the right hand side l inverse of t is lx of u and minus lt inverse on n of u and plus there will be some function what function because lt inverse is an integral operator and it will generate some constants to get those constants we apply we need to apply the initial conditions which is alpha in this case because as you can see that we will differentiate u respect to t and apply limit it will have two limit upper limit will remain as function but for the lower limit ut we need to use this value since it is at t is a zero so it involves alpha whatever the condition may be so here we have, will have some alpha here okay now we have to we have to assume our solution let as we did before this will be u will be in terms of infinite series k from 0 to infinity u k of x t and our non-linear term n u will be in the form of n from 0 to infinity a domain polynomials where a domain polynomials are equal to a n is equal to 1 over n factorial d n by d lambda n non-linear term of summation i from 0 to n lambda to the power n u i x t and we will evaluate this at lambda is equal to 0 and our n of u here it is equal to u square minus u okay after using this assumption as we have seen before this becomes summation k from 0 to infinity u k x t is equal to l t inverse l x of u which is now summation from k 0 to infinity u k minus l inverse t of n n of u n of u is summation from n 0 to infinity a n okay replacing dummy variables and comparing we get the recurrence relations in the form of as follows 
u naught x t will be equal to any term which is free of n this operator which is here just alpha and u n plus 1 of x t of course equal to l inverse t of f l x in of u n x t and minus l t inverse of n of a in this case where n has varied from 0 1 2 so on this is our reconnaissance relation which we need to solve to get the components u naught which is already given but other way other components from u1 u2 and u3 okay now we get u how to get u1 first we need to take n is equal to 0 when n is 0 the second term becomes u1 xt is equal to lt inverse of lx of un which is now u u naught because n is 0 and then lt inverse n of a naught we have u naught which is alpha we need to figure out what is a naught which is a Roman polynomial first Roman polynomial here you can see that if we take n is equal to 0 this becomes a 0 1 over 0 factorial 1 d 0 by d lambda 0 will be nothing so n of summation i 0 to n since 0 is n so i 0 from 0 to 0 it has only one term i to the lambda power 0 which is 1 and u naught so it is just u naught and in the previous lecture i actually obtained few abdominal polynomials you can watch them figure out how i get this so a naught is just n of u naught so a naught is n of u naught and what is u naught u naught is alpha so what is n of u first we need to find n of u n of u as i mentioned earlier is u square minus u naught so what is u n u naught this becomes nothing but u naught square minus u naught since n of u is this term so n u naught is this and since u naught is alpha so it is alpha square minus alpha so plugging these values here i get l inverse of t l x of u naught u naught is alpha l inverse t n of a naught sorry uh, here it will not be n since n is already being used in the Romian polynomial calculations so here is just a n not a n of a n is just a n so it is just a naught so a naught is we have found a naught here so a naught is alpha square minus alpha okay now l t inverse l x what is l x it is partial square by partial x square of alpha minus l inverse t of alpha square minus alpha and since alpha is constant when we differentiate it by x it will be 0 so it will be 0 and inverse operator of 0 is of course 0 so it, the first term will be 0 minus second term since l inverse is integral from 0 to t of alpha square minus alpha with respect to t it becomes it becomes minus alpha square minus alpha it will be constant put outside and i will get just t so this is my u1 or it can be written as u1 if we put negative sign inside it will be alpha minus alpha square into t or we can take alpha common so alpha into 1 minus 1 minus alpha into t in our u1 okay now we'll find u2 from this take n is equal to 1 so n is equal to 1 when n is 1, 
our recurrence relation will take the form u2 it will be u2 on the left and on the right it becomes l inverse t lx of u1 minus l inverse t a1 now we have u1 this is our u1 and we need to find a1 a1 in the previous lecture i have calculated you can go and watch is nothing but n prime of u0 into u we can do it here again if you, if you, if you like just since a n is equal to 1 over n factorial d n by d lambda n n of summation i from 0 to n lambda power i into u i when lambda is equal to 0 so in order to get a 1 we need to put n is equal to 1 okay when n is 1 it is a 1 1 over 1 factorial 1 so it is d by d lambda n of summation i 0 to n which is 1 so it has two terms when i is 0 when i is 1 when i is 0 we will get just u naught because lambda power 0 1 and when i is 1 we will get u 1 into lambda and remember we need to put lambda 0 at the end ok now we need to differentiate but before we do this we just plug the value of n what is n? n is equal to u square minus u. So this becomes, since n is u square minus u, so this becomes u naught plus u1 lambda, it's square minus u, which is u naught plus u1 lambda. This is the definition of my nonlinear term, as I mentioned see that n is equal to here u square minus u so whatever the argument of n here um, this is my u so u square minus u okay now differentiate it with respect to lambda first term to outside u plus u1 into lambda and we'll differentiate from inner with respect to lambda first term 0 and we'll get just u1 this is the first term and for the second term u0 is 0 and for second term I will get u1 so it is just minus u1. Okay, now I, I need to plug lambda is equal to 0 and lambda is equal to 0 this becomes 2 this term is 0 this is u0 into u1 and minus u1. This is my a1. Okay, further since, since u not is alpha so it is 2 alpha and u1 is this value alpha into 1 minus alpha with alpha scale and 1 minus alpha into t and minus u1 is alpha into 1 minus alpha into t this is my a1 polynomial plug it here so here i will get u2 is equal to l inverse t lx which is partial 2 by partial x square of u1 which is alpha into 1 minus alpha into t minus again we have l inverse which is 0 to t integral 0 to t and a1 which is this one 2 alpha square into 1 minus alpha 1 minus alpha t minus alpha into 1 minus alpha t and t t okay Again for the first term because it has only t terms but we have to differentiate with respect to x so it will be 0. So everything will be 0 in the first term. For the second term we can take t common from the four terms and put everything outside. So it's minus 2 alpha square 1 minus alpha. And then we have since minus is outside so it is plus alpha into 1 minus alpha and integral 0 to 2 of t dt here okay it becomes minus 2 alpha square and then we have plus 2 lambda cube plus lambda minus lambda square and outside we have t square 
this can be simplified to 2 lambda cube minus 2 lambda square minus lambda square which is minus 3 lambda square plus lambda into t square over 2. We can take lambda common. So lambda is common 2 alpha square minus 3 alpha plus 1 into t square over 2. We can factorize the quadratic equation and we get alpha into uh, if we factorize 2 alpha square we can write it minus 2 alpha minus alpha plus 1 2 alpha is common so alpha minus 1 minus common alpha minus 1 so alpha minus 1 into 2 alpha minus 1 so alpha into alpha minus 1 into 2 alpha minus 1 into 2 square over 2 this is my view okay in the same process if you continue this process you can find that u3 will be equal to in the form of same pattern it will be somehow alpha into alpha minus 1 2 alpha minus 1 and then 3 alpha minus 1 and t cube over 3 and so on so using all these terms we get our solution u x t which is in the form of infinite c k from 0 to infinity u k which is equal to u naught u1 plus u2 plus u3 so on so here u x t since we couldn't able to find all of the terms and it is not apparently a famous series so it will be it will rather be approximate solution u naught which is alpha and then u1 alpha into 1 minus alpha t then alpha into 1 minus alpha 1 minus 2 alpha t square over 2 and plus so on so this is our solution of the differential equation in the form of, of an infinite series so here as you can see that we get solution in the form of infinite series in, in some cases, the series can be sum up and we can get the solution in elementary functions. I will take one example of such type in the next lecture and I will show you that it is possible to get the exact solution of the nonlinear partial differential equation by means of Aromian decomposition method. Thank you for watching.